GTM Podcast Buddhist Knowledge 38 Blessing of Life Blessing 12 Part 5 Hello everyone You are listening to GTM Podcast Buddhist Knowledge Series Right now we are learning on Blessing 12 Care for your children In this episode Continue from the previous one About Raising children from child to adulthood, which allow us to understand the importance of upbringing our child in the proper direction for their life in the long run. Thus today, one of the main points is to teach your child to be established in virtue. How to do that? Well, if you have not listened to the previous episode just yet, we suggest you go back to understand them further in depth. But if you already are, you are set. Then let us continue. Teach your child to be established in virtue. The first good friends to each and every one of us in the world are our parents or guardians. They are the ones to instill the virtue of being a teacher to yourself in a child. They call this in Buddhism as Yoniso Monasikara. And each parent must take responsibility for such a duty. From the time their child first opened their eyes to the world onwards, there is ample medical and psychological evidence to suggest that Every individual is impressionable right from the time they are being a baby. For example, a baby whose nappy is left unchanged regularly and soiled for a long period of time is liable later in life to unhygienic and messy habits. Thus, parents should not be neglectful in setting up the sort of habits they would like to see in their children. As for higher virtues, the importance is proportionally greater. You cannot just wait for teachers or schools to do the job for you. They will never be able to give full attention to the task because their students are many and the time for each is limited. And what's more, a student's time spent at school is still less than the time spent at home. For all these reasons, the instilling of virtue in children is an important duty for the parents. Right from the time the child is still a baby. It is the duty which requires perseverance and consistency and requires an understanding or sequencing and graduation in virtues taught to know what to teach a child first and what to keep until they are older. Just as mentioned for preventing your child from doing evil, the parents can influence the child in a positive way by 1. Setting a good example to your child. Parents should show their generosity, doing chanting, etc. in front of their child and be seen by their children to take an interest in reading books on beneficial subjects. 2. Choosing good friends for your child It may seem trivial or overzealous to worry about so many aspects of a child's environment and development. However, it should be pointed out that a child left to his own device has a very slim chance of developing into a well-balanced adult. Just as a child left alone will choose junk food or convenient food rather than nutritious food and grows up physically weak. A child left to choose its own sources of knowledge without any guidelines will develop a flawed character. Thus, every child who grows up with a genuine respect for the precepts and meditation together with a generous heart does so only as the result of unflagging enthusiasm by 
his parents for instilling the value of Dharma practice. Of course, the possible virtues you can teach to a child are many, but the most important in the development of being a teacher to yourself are 1. Knowledge of the highest aim of Buddhism, which is the highest aim in life of humankind. Buddhism teaches us to pursue perfection. When our perfections are fulfilled, we will be able to overcome the last of the defilements in our minds, and we will be able to break free from the cycle of rebirth. 2. Knowledge of how to practice in order to achieve our highest aim in life. Normally, the threefold practice of self-discipline, sila, meditation, samadhi, and wisdom, panya. Three, the four virtues for a householder or karawasa dhamma. One, truthfulness or satcha. Two, training oneself or dhamma. Three, patience or kanti. Four, self-sacrifice or jaka. Four, supporting their religion. That Buddhists have the job of supporting their religion, because man's highest refuge is the triple gem. It means that care should be taken to support the sangha or monastic community who perpetuate and spread Buddhism. If any monastic member is deprived of the support of householders before long, he will be unable to continue his duties. And in turn, that is the end of the life of Buddhism. In other words, it is the job of Buddhists to support their religion. 5. The Mangala Sutta or the 38 blessings of life that we are listening to right now. They are the principles in keeping with especially the first six blessings. 1. Not associating with fools. Mother and father must teach children how to choose appropriate friends and spouse. 2. Associating with the wise, like those who are adept in self-discipline, meditation and wisdom. 3. Honoring those worthy of respect, especially the Buddha, monks who practice well, the kings or rulers or governments who have established themselves by the ten virtues of the monarchs, parents and elder relatives and various teachers, even one's boss if he is honest. Having respect for such people means attempting to follow the good example set by such people. 4. Living in a manable location, an unpolluted environment with good prospect for work and education both in worldly and spiritual ways, and even government, not somewhere dominate criminal underworld. 5. Get down to the pursuit of the perfections. Our work in the present time, will bring its fruits in the future. In the same way, the happiness we receive in the present must be the result of our pursuit of perfection in the past. The merits we accrue will bring fruits ensuring our intelligence, prosperity, and progress in our duties in the future. And happiness in life in accordance with the Buddhist proverb, the accrual of merit brings happiness, and merit is the refuge of beings in the world to come. Furthermore, the fate of those who are steadfast, the accrual of merit, will be a shield to protect them from temptation of evil ways. 6. Setting oneself up properly in life especially having the correct aim in life. 
anyone who has accumulated all the foregoing virtues will be sure to have developed the ability to be a teacher to themselves with the flexibility to adapt appropriate to any circumstances and will be able to earn their living successfully. Life is happy and such a person has worth to society. Apart from the virtues mentioned earlier, Parents should be ultra-critical of table manners, sleeping habits, especially fixing bedtime, and working habits, especially working hours. Because these are all fundamental ways of developing self-discipline, without the parents prodding, you can be certain that self-discipline will not be developed by accident. A child should also be expected to make a contribution to the work of a household since they are small. If they are wetted up on hand and foot and have too much time on their hands, in the end, the child may be unable to help themselves. That's everyone. It's quite detailed, isn't it? How to bring your children up properly. Well, this is not the end yet because we will continue in the next episode. Giving your child an education. This is also part of growing for a child to become a good adult. So everyone, if you like this program, don't forget to subscribe, like and share to your friends and family or loved ones. So that way they can also learn the benefit. Help bringing up their children to be a good person in the future for the society as well. Until then.